What's going on guys? Welcome back to Clash of the Dark. Today we're going to be talking about the Queen Charge Laloon at Town Hall 11. We saw a lot of this during the Champion War League Invite Division Finals between Jayoff and King Jeffrey. This war, six months of competitive play, then a gruesome playoffs where two teams emerged and went into the finals. That was Jayoff and King Jeffrey, and they both were crushing bases with the Queen Charge Laloon. There's not a lot that can really stop this strategy, except for maybe a well-placed single Inferno, but when you see those single infernos just go bat slap them there's really not a way to stop a bat slap when you got single infernos it's almost unstoppable so let's get into some attacks here let's go check out their queen charge law and talk about it in detail make sure you guys hit that like button hit that subscribe button and let's do this all right, guys, here's the final score of the war there. King Jeffrey getting 131 out of 135. That would have won it against most clans, but Jayoff is not most clans. They went completely undefeated all the way through the regular season and into the finals, and they come out almost perfect in the last war, barely missing it by one star. What is the most used attack throughout the entire war here? Well, it is the Queen Charge Laloon. Let's go check out some attacks here because the first one we're looking at is Overdose from King Jeffrey. The thing I want you to take away from this attack is control of your queen. You gotta have control of your queen and you need to direct her through the base, not just let her go wild and go wherever she's going. So your first instinct when you do a queen charge is maybe you need to charge the queen directly. She's accessible from outside the base here. You might want to charge from two or three o'clock and that on this base maybe could have worked, but you're not gonna get a lot of value outside of that. We gotta get value with the queen outside of just getting the enemy queen and the CC down. So. How does he do it here? He comes in at seven o'clock instead and watch how he uses the jump here. The jump spell is critical and one of the biggest takeaways I want you to take out of this. So the jump doesn't just get the queen in the base, but it directs her through the base. So a lot of people might be thinking I would have put the jump over the intersection here and open up all those compartments, but that's not what you want to do with the queen charge. You want to make so that you have control and you're sending her exactly where you want her to go, not just giving her open access to everything. Otherwise, she may never make it to the queen. She might be wandering off up towards the top, attacking a wall like queens do, and then she'll never make it through. So we make the approach to the queen here. We have access to the Eagle and Inferno, to air defenses and Expo, and then can continue on all the way into the Queen. Under two Expo fire here, he has to release some of the damage off of the Queen before he engages the enemy Queen here. The Eagle activates and targets the healers. When the Eagle activates, you need to start the Laloon, because if you don't, and those Eagle uh, gets two shots off on your healers, then your healers are done. If they take a shot at your Queen while she's fighting the enemy Queen, you're done. If you, if you see the Eagle activate, you need to start the Laloon, and so he's able to put through here the slammer starts it off and then the balloons follow the hounds and after that a couple haste to push them through and you can get so much value out of a good queen charge that you don't really need a lot of spells for the law loon you can just use a couple haste spells as you try to work your way through the remaining inferno and through the wizard towers and you can just power through the rest so overdose crushes the base here a couple minions down to follow and when you do a long queen charge like that a very heavily invested queen charge sometimes it takes some time so we bring some extra minions there usually maybe as much as 10 to make sure you have enough cleanup to finish off the base so he's able to get this one and bring in the three star queen survives and often if the queen does survive then you will be successful in the attack and you'll get the three star so very nice attack here by overdose but let's go check out some more all right, guys, this next attack is the most standard approach to the Queen Charge Slalom. One of the simplest ways to do it, we start the Queen on the corner. We send out a simple funnel. Usually the corners are the easiest spot to funnel. On this base, it was symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which way she goes. But knowing where she's going to go gives you a chance to funnel out in front of her and also saves you time as you know that she doesn't have to clear all that extra trash there and she can work her way through. So a couple balloons there go a long way to save some time because sometimes the Queen Charge Slalom is a little bit prone to a time fail so it's better to just funnel her so now the king comes out in front of her the king has two jobs clearing trash is one so that the queen gets forced in the base but he also goes and tanks a lot of the defenses out in front of the entry so that they aren't shooting wall breakers so he gets the archer tower and had the cannon there tank for a minute and now he's entering into the brunt of the base here let's pause it for one second because we often are going to look at a queen charge and we want to know if the queen once she enters the base is there going to be enough 
uh, healing on her to keep her up or is she going to go down? So on her we see two expos. We have the archer tower over here. We're about to engage the CC and we're about to engage the queen. We're going to engage the queen first but we're going to be under a couple expos while we do it. So are we going to survive? And do we have a plan for that? Well, Chris here. He has a plan and that's when you're going to be using freezes and rages when you're under heavy heavy damage like that otherwise don't even attempt it don't go under that much fire or you're going to lose the expos are the biggest threat to the queen there after you protect her healers so as long as you don't drag our healers through an air defense or an inferno you're going to be all right there but now watch as he makes his approach here the rage comes down and he wants to save his queen ability here you don't know when you're going to need it and it's better if you can have a backup plan here well, look at this look this whenever you see a vulnerable defense here and you have an opportunity to pick it off and it's out of reach of the queen then snipe it in this case he uses a wizard to snipe it you can use balloons his air defense was guarding it a little bit he probably could have got it after the air defense went down but he's reducing damage off of the queen by picking off free defenses right here so continuing on here he gets the cc uh pull here and he gets the queen down right before he engages his cc a bunch of archers looks like a dragon did he get the full cc pull I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, he's inside. So he's going to take out the CC and now he can work his way into the base here. Is there going to be another spot on the base here that's going to overload the queen? Well, he's going to engage these top expos probably at the same time and probably going to be under a lot of fire from his other defenses when he does it. So his next threat is those expos and he needs to get them tanked by something else before the queen. There you go. The queen under fire by two expos, two archer towers, the grand warren statue luckily steps away a little bit there under the rage. He has this ability for this time. The slammer coming through trying to trim out those defenses take him out so that the queen gets out of some fire here she's hanging on holding on to every rage that she has to try to keep pushing and it's a tough push there but she can make it through she can make it through you just got to trust her and you need to have those freezes ready you need to keep her under a rage the entire time when she's under those heavy fire areas and now even the warden ability is going to help her and the balloons as they move through a couple haste to get them through the splash defenses and then they can just kind of coast through the other defenses and he can make his way through queen finally pops her ability doesn't even need it at this point doesn't need the last haste and is able to swag both of those beautiful job here by chris a whole bunch of me is down to follow and he's got the three star no problem with uh what how many minions is that he brought uh seven minions that's usually about the same amount i like to bring i think seven to ten minions is usually a good number let's see he had a few extra over here as well so ten minions is a good amount I like to bring that so you don't time fail and when you can get more value to your queen charge by letting her go a little bit longer, you're going to be all right. If you can get that eagle down, she can go really long ways before she activates the eagle and you can get a huge value out of her. So nice attack here by Chris. Let's go check out some more. All right, guys, in this next attack, I want to show you two different things here. One is the healer placement to make sure that they do not switch onto the king or other friendly troops nearby. And secondly, notice down in the troop bar there, he's got four earthquakes to enter the base here. So let's watch how he deploys his healers here. He sends out his king there to funnel first, and the queen is not taking any damage yet. So he wants to delay his healers until after the queen is actually taking damage. If he deployed them right now, then the healers would surely switch over to the king and they get dragged to their death but he waits till his archer tower is targeting the queen then he drops his healers and that'll make sure that the healers will stay on the queen so now the earthquakes come down to actually let him go into the base here notice that every single one of these buildings is at half health that's going to make sure that queen can move through and one shot them that's going to make her move so much quicker through that area not only saving time but also opening up a bigger area of the base there but in addition to all of that it's almost going to save him a rage that he would have had to use to go through all those buildings to get that extra shot and that's going to make so that he effectively saves a spell almost by using the earthquakes because he doesn't need to use another rage there to get her through the same amount of base and so now he's getting targeted by the eagle here he needs to start his la Lune. and so here he goes the queen is on to the eagle would have liked to see a little bit higher hit point structures getting hit i like to use earthquakes when i'm trying to charge into a lot of like expos and the infernos and the eagle if i like to hit if i can hit the eagle with an 
earthquake, then that's a lot of health right there that I can bring down and speed things along greatly as I move through the base. So in comes a Laloon, a few haste to rush them through any splash damage, and then a warden ability to carry them through the last little bit. The warden almost sticks out behind and doesn't follow along here as he goes into the last inferno, but catches up right in time there to move in, gets through the wizard tower into the inferno, and is able to clean this one out. Is this one close? I actually didn't watch this one all the way to the end. I just wanted to look at the actual queen deployment there to so I can show you the healers. But it looks like the queen is actually going to have to finish this one up. And that's actually pretty important there because if the queen survives, a lot of times, even if the Laloon falls short, as long as it's not like a single inferno standing or something, then you can continue on with that queen almost indefinitely. And as long as you have enough time, then you can make it through. Uh, and once again, with the earthquakes being used, he saved time and so he has a little bit of time to spare at the end of this and it ends up saving the raid here so nice job by captain sizu didn't get through the Laloon, but the queen charge was on point and he goes through and finishes off the base very very nice here and a close raid but it's a three star All right, guys, on this next attack, we're going to take everything we've talked about so far and bring it all into one attack. So as you can see on this base, you might be thinking, well, the best entry would be coming in from six o'clock, going to the wizard towers, jumping into the eagle. Well, easier said than done. Sometimes a lot of bases are going to counter entries like that and make the funnel in that area very difficult and make that entry all trapped up and just make it a giant pain to be able to get through there. So sometimes you got to think outside the box here and come in at a different angle. So here we go. The queen and the king coming in together. The queen has not deployed her healers yet. So the king is going to finish the funnel, get out of the way, and then this cannon will lock onto the queen. That's when he'll drop his healers. Also, if there was anything other else coming out of that CC other than a hound and that uh, balloon, then he would want to make sure that the healers are deployed in a position around the queen so that they do not go to the healers and they go after the queen and that will make so that the healers are protected. You don't want a baby dragon sneaking up behind your queen and taking out your healers. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. So a minion comes down to help deal with the pups and then the baby dragon finishes the fall on the other side. If you notice, there was a cocoa loom with that baby dragon to make sure that that baby dragon got its value and was able to clear all the trash out there. He doesn't have a backup to clear the trash. So if the queen went to that trash and went outside the base there, he'd be kind of screwed. Now the slammer is going to come in and clear the trash uh, and the defenses, I mean, around the queen there to push her into the base. She's going to go in after the queen. So kind of a unique way to use the slammer there. And then the queen is going to use her ability to take out the queen. If you don't have your ability, then you have to freeze the queen. Otherwise, you're going to die. You're going to lose your queen. She does too much damage unless it's a lower level queen and you're going to get wrecked. So this directs the queen into the eagle. Notice that the earthquakes didn't open up access to the expo compartments and it might have been tempting to hit the expos with the earthquakes but it was more important that the queen makes a beeline towards the eagle because there's no other pathing into the eagle and all the balloons would have wrapped around it and continue to get shot so he makes a path to the queen to get to the eagle because the balloons would not have been able to make it in a rage comes down to get the balloons the rest of the way through the base a couple balloons come in the backside to snipe off the arch tower up at 10 30 and the queen still alive is going to be able to continue on and finish into cleanup and is are those balloons gonna be able to get that arch tower kind of a close one again on this one they're able to get it down and bring in the three stars so often this attack is going to come down to time if you can get a good queen charge and the Laloon is fairly easy most of the time because the queen breaks all the way to the center of the base and all that is left is a ring like a, a a C shape of defenses that are left on the base and you just need to haste your balloons through that C if they're going to end on a multi inferno then we're going to bring in a freeze or a heal spell to get them through that and that's what we're going to look at next. All right, guys, as we're waiting for his troops to drop here, I want to direct your attention to this top inferno. Look at the spacing of that inferno compared to the outside wall. It looks like that inferno is walkable by the queen and she could just walk up and shoot it over the corner and reach it. And normally she would be able to, but this little torch here, this torch right above the inferno is going to block access so that that queen cannot reach that inferno. It's a decoration trick that makes so that you can prevent access to defenses with that exact spacing and make so the queen looks like she can get into him and she normally would be able to but she can't 
and that's kind of a cool thing just want to point it out but now he's going to enter the base here he's going to do a double wall break to get into the queen and that's going to free up so he doesn't have, he doesn't need to jump he doesn't need the earthquake to get into her he freezes her so he doesn't have to use his ability so we talked about that a little bit and now he's going to engage the cc he's under two expo fire while he does it so he's going to need a rage here and he's going to need a little bit of punch here he delays dropping his poison until after the hound has already taken a little bit of damage and he's even taking eagle shots here taking some serious fire here might need to use his queen ability and that poison delayed is going to be able to stick around long enough to take out the pups here so now that queen can, can finally continue on and you might be thinking well what about a jump over to the eagle would that be more value i like to generally as a rule of thumb not use a jump unless i'm gonna get an inferno out of it if i can get an inferno then great if otherwise i need the heal spell otherwise i'm not gonna make it through both infernos the queen ends up going over here through the wall of the slammer open and takes out the inferno so ends up getting it either way but he's still ending on inferno and he's gonna be taking eagle fire all the way through the warden ability will help him get through the eagle shots and the queen is actually gonna take out the sweeper Maybe. No, she's going to get distracted by some air skellies there and get stuck there forever. The, the slammer is going to end up taking it down, which is going to continue the queen through the base even more. That's just the nice part about using the slammer anywhere near the queen is it keeps on opening up walls and giving her access through the base there. A warden ability is coming into the far back side of the base. As soon as that warden ability wears off, he's going to need the heal spell down. There it is, going into the wizard tower and the inferno. Even has distraction balloons coming down for the wizard tower on the back side. If you have a wizard tower at the end of your path and you can send in a balloon just hold on to one or two and send them in to distract those wizard towers and look at this the base is crushed he <laughs> this was even more crushed than the other ones the queen somehow was fighting her way through the base there with the slammer opening up access i like to use a slammer nearby the queen unless it's going to go right into an air defense that's that he can't access or something like that but it does a really good job of just opening up the base and allowing that queen that might be stuck without any earthquakes or jump spells to continue on. This is my favorite way to use the queen charge Lalin is with the heal spell. I like to wall break in and use the slammer to open my way to continue through. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can go out there and prove your Queen Charge Laloon and bring down some bases. And once again, congratulations to JF on winning the Champion War League Invite Division Finals. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.